This is the Mark Dolan Way. Top tips for mind, body and soul, some great life hacks and my favourite products of the week. This show is available on all podcast platforms or you can watch it. Just subscribe to the Mark Dolan Way on YouTube and join the Facebook group. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to the show. I hope you are very well. I have an amazing mantra that will give you so much power and put you on the path to success and personal fulfillment. Losing is learning. That's right. Losing is learning. Now, life contains failure. That's built in. Things go wrong. You might be in a football match and you lose or you are up for a promotion and someone else gets it. In that sense, you've lost. It's possible that a relationship ends, someone that you were very fond of and they leave you. You've lost them. So losing is part of life, but losing is learning. It's the ultimate gift because it allows you to focus on what went wrong and fix it. It's the ultimate diagnostic tool. So for example, let's say you've lost a tennis match. If you take the view, if you say that mantra in your head, losing is learning, then you're going to reflect on the weaknesses of your game and the player managed to do something with my serve and something with my forehand and something with my backhand. And you take the fact that you lost that game to make yourself better and to not repeat those mistakes and to work on the weak areas and get stronger in those areas. That's only possible if you lose. I can tell you that as a comedian, if a gig doesn't go well and they don't laugh, it quickly tells you what jokes don't work. And normally the material, the words just feels like too many words. It's too long. It's too waffly. It's like crunch that down. Whereas a friendly audience that laugh at everything will not really tell you if the joke is funny. So losing is learning. It's a really good thing because obviously failure is part of life. And the mantra losing is learning allows you to really own that failure, not just accept it. Acceptance is important, but to actually say, I love it. I love the fact that I lost that tennis game because I'm going to be a better tennis player as a result of having been defeated. Success teaches you nothing. The worst thing you can do in a work situation, for example, let's just say you do an amazing job on something and the boss says, do that again. And you're like, how do I do that again? I don't know what I did. It it just went well. Whereas if something goes horribly wrong and you submit a company report and it's full of mistakes and it's a disaster, you lose a client. It's like, it's very clear. We can now go through this and see why this debacle actually happened. And we can put systems in place to make sure it doesn't happen again. Um, I'll give you a very mundane example. I was working on a television script the other day and it's a live document. And I put a lot of work into some changes into this script. Okay, fastidious work with extra words and different citations. It was laborious and it was a live document which others had access to. And I was just in the middle of this document and I hadn't saved it. And then another colleague, I think I went online, I came off the document and looked, I was looking something up on the internet. And then I went back to the live document and someone else was in it. Okay, so someone else had jumped into it, which meant that the work I'd done hadn't been saved. Now, I texted this person saying, can you get out of the document? I've lost all my changes. And she was really apologetic. She said, I'm so, so sorry. And she's like, I'm in trouble and I'm in the doghouse. And I said, no, not at all. Far from it. I'm very grateful that you did that. First of all, it was my bad for not saving the work. And I've introduced a new protocol now, which is that when I'm in one of these live documents, about every five minutes, I'll just hit the save button. Okay, just as a little tradition, as a a habit, as a discipline, Um, that even if someone then does jump in, you've at least saved most of it. And this person by creating this setback of all that lost work has gifted me the most wonderful thing because now that'll never happen again. It can never happen again. I was so horrified at losing that work. It was so uncomfortable. It was so painful. I'd never want to go through that again. And therefore I will have this new system of saving regularly. And she's gifted that to me. So it wasn't her bad at all. 
And I must thank her. And I did thank her for it. And that's the point about losing is learning. So I lost that work and I learned from it. It's a spectacular mantra. Losing is learning. Anytime anything goes wrong in your life, just keep saying it in your head. I want you after this podcast, spend the rest of your day just thinking losing is learning. And it means, as I say, you don't just accept it, but you're going to you're going to own it. Right. You're going to embrace it. So there you go. Did you hear that little signal on my uh, on my laptop there? That's because my son is trying to call me. So I've just silenced him now. And uh, that was a mistake. So I'll make sure now that the laptop is always muted when we do this podcast. Losing is learning. Do it, baby. It will change your life. And the wonderful thing is that this appetite for losing will make you less afraid of failure, which means that you'll be more inventive, more brave, more bold, more innovative. You'll take more risks, all from having that mentality of losing is learning. Never stop learning. If you you have a period of time where you're never losing, I don't think that you're rolling the dice enough. It could be the case that you need to lose more than you do. Uh, This happens with very, very famous, successful people who are on a winning run. Shall I mention Elton John at this point? I think we should. He had a ridiculous streak. And I think it was was about 10 albums that all just sold millions of copies between 1970 and 1975. And then I think it was like the 11th album. It didn't do very well. And it was a bit spooky for old Elton because, he, you know, he hadn't experienced failure for five years. And he was quite relieved when it happened because he thought, oh, thank God for that. So now it's, it's, it's happened. You know what I mean? It's broken the spell. I mean, I don't think it was pleasant at first, but it allowed him to recalibrate and to go, yes, I am human and I am impervious. So I am, I, I am you know, subject to life's rigours just like everyone else. And um, it was a really good thing for him. It was healthy. And then he started thinking about his private life and he looked at, he thought it's not only about material success and about record sales. Um, I would like to have a personal life and I'd like to have some free time. And he went and bought a football club and he just rebalanced his life. But it was failure. It was actually the album sales beginning to dip and the end of that winning run, which for him was something of a blessing. And that's what we have to do is we just have to embrace that and losing is learning. However, can I just say one thing? This podcast is very much about you achieving your potential and doing really well. I really want you to just tap into who and what you can be. So I'm very ambitious for you. I'm thinking really big for you because you are unique. You're talented. You are fabulous. You are sensational. Your potential is unlimited. But I'm not saying just you should be a loser. So do not be confused. When I say losing is learning, okay, I don't want you to love losing. I want you to embrace it and I want you to own it. I want you to accept it. I want you to understand it's part of life. But if you lose and you don't analyze why, you've lost its magic, you've lost its power. So there are people who are unsuccessful and they have wretched, unfulfilled lives. And I guess you could be unkind and call that person a loser. Well, that's because they're very good at the losing bit. They're not so hot on the learning. So you need all three words. You need losing is learning. You need the learning bit and you need the losing bit. And if you don't learn, so let's say something goes wrong in a relationship is a good example. Okay, so if you're in a relationship and then it ends and then you're in another relationship and it ends and then you're in a third relationship and it ends, there's a bit of a pattern emerging here. Let's say they always dump you. Um, It could be that you're doing the losing bit, but you're not really doing the learning. Okay, so you need to be honest with yourself. Analyze. I've been dumped three times now. Uh, Why is that? Well, could I made could I have made more of an effort with my appearance? Um, Did I listen to them? Did I engage with what they were saying or was I self-obsessed? Was I affectionate? Did I tell them I loved them? You know, you'll go through and you'll have a think, an honest think with yourself. You could even reach out to an ex and say, listen, hey, how are you? Um, I know you're my ex now, but could you do me a big favor? Could you tell me 
the things that made you leave me so that I can learn from that and not repeat those mistakes. And you're very often fine. I mean, it happens in marriages. Sometimes people find bliss on the third marriage. I mean, it's not ideal, is it? You'd rather nail it in your first marriage, but sometimes it works for number two or number three. And it's because they've been on that journey. They've made mistakes in previous relationships and husband number three or wife number three is very lucky because they are a beneficiary of all of that learned experience, that wisdom that you've accumulated. It's a beautiful thing. So you've got to do that learning. And that's why if it's in a work setting or let's say it's sport, let's say it's anything, you can take a little journal, you can write down, let's say you have a problem at work and something went badly wrong. Why didn't you just get a book? Do you remember when I talked in the previous episode about having a nice notebook with different coloured pens? Because fun stationery shouldn't be limited to children. You can have some lovely pens, okay? And green can signify one aspect of your life and red can signify another. That'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? But get your journal or fire up your laptop um, or even talk it through with a friend and just analyse it. I had a bad day at work. Everything went wrong. Why did it go wrong? How can I prevent that from happening again? What systems can I put in place so that I don't have a bad day like that again? Um, I'll give you a lovely Jose Mourinho metaphor. I think I might have mentioned it in a previous show, but it, it bears repeating, which is that he joined one particular football club. I think it was when he joined Spurs. And uh, they said, you know, what are you going to bring to the, to the club and everything was his first press conference. And he said, well, He said, "Um, I won't make the I won't make um, the mistakes I've made in the past. But I will make new ones. And I think that's really, really interesting and very smart. So he's acknowledging that he will make mistakes, that he's that he's fallible. But what he won't do is he won't make previous mistakes because he'll have he'll have lost and learned. So let's imagine, for example, that he substituted a goalkeeper at half time and it disrupted the team well he rolled the dice he gambled it really backfired confused the players so he's like well I will not do that again I will n- I'm not going to substitute the goalkeeper again because that really backfired but then that becomes like a superpower because that's like this valuable thing that he knows that the other manager doesn't so the team is playing another team and the other manager doesn't know that if you change goalkeeper at half time that it's going to backfire he hasn't he hasn't got that wonderful rich experience of having lost and made a mistake so actually the more you lose as long as you've learned from it you're better than the other people it makes you better losing makes you better losing is the special source losing is the magic losing is how you get to the top but only if you learn at the same time Wonderful. Um, Let's talk about food, shall we? I've got a really simple way of telling if food is good or not. And it's to do with its original temperature. So if you're not sure whether food is good or bad, try having it at the wrong temperature. Okay. And I'll give you a really simple, good example, which is beer. Okay. And I... I remember my lovely mother-in-law, I visited her and she had these really nice Austrian beers. But the beer, right, came out of a cupboard. Can you imagine? This beer came out of a cupboard in a room, not out of the fridge. Now, I'm all about the cold beers. I'm obsessed with cold beer. And for me, it's not enough that it's in the fridge. I will put the beer in the freezer 15, 20 minutes before I drink it. It goes from the fridge, which is already cold, and it gets an extra chill in the freezer. NGL, that means I'm not going to lie, but just the first letter of each of those words, one after the other. NGL, not going to lie. It's a bit like OMG, and that means, oh my God, but just the first letter of each of the words in a row. It saves a lot of time, and it's very cool. And um, yeah, I just, for me, beer's got to be really cold, right? So this lovely lady, she takes out a beer. I'm sure, would you like a beer? Oh, yes, please. And she goes to the cupboard. She takes out a room temperature beer. Can you imagine anything worse? Anyway, I tried it. It was insanely delicious. 
And I have since had that beer very cold and it's also insanely delicious. And this is where I developed the theory that if a food or a drink is good, it can be enjoyed at any temperature. It's like, yes, beer should be cold, even the good one. But if it's good enough, it'll taste great at room temperature. And that is that is a phenomenal thing for all food. So, for example, let me give you the difference between McDonald's French fries. OK, I mean, I can't lie. They are they are delicious hot. I think McDonald's French fries fresh out of the. Isn't it great when you watch them, you watch them make them right. They've come out of the deep fryer. They shake them onto that metal thing and then they put the salt on and then it goes into the little holder and then they hand it over to you in a bag and they're hot. The bag is hot. The chips are hot. Steaming. Amazing. It's not so good when they've been on the rack for a few minutes or they've come off the rack and they go into your bag and then you don't eat them for maybe five minutes and they're kind of like warmish, but they go a bit soggy. Well, try having room temperature, cold McDonald's chips. Inedible. Absolutely inedible. They've got to be hot. Otherwise, you can't get them down you. That is the diagnostic tool that will tell you that they are not good, that that they're not, that it's not great food. If it can only be enjoyed, it's the same with now crap beer, for example, right? So let's imagine you've got a real sort of supermarket, crappy, sort of pissy beer, Okay, cheap supermarket, own brand beer, low quality rubbish. Um, That's going to taste fine cold, but at room temperature, undrinkable. And that's the difference. So it's a diagnostic tool. Um, It works for so many things. For example, ice cream. I mean, ice cream is is nice, isn't it? A good ice cream, even, even if you just had it as a liquid form, it would still taste pretty good. But a McDonald's milkshake melted. Welcome to hell. Um, Things that taste great cold, very well cooked. Roast potatoes. I love cold roast potatoes out of the fridge. But you see the difference. McDonald's potatoes cold. Inedible. Homemade roast potatoes, ideally in duck or goose fat. Or lard. You're welcome absolutely delicious. Do you know what I love to do? It's a great snack. And I know they're carbohydrates, by the way. So if you're trying to lose weight and you're low carb, then don't have the potatoes. But once you've hit your target weight, then you can bring a bit of carb back in. And I do indulge in a, in a few potatoes from time to time. And out of the fridge, what I do is I get, I get cold, like next day roast potatoes, cut them in half, And I do a little bit of the grinder with some pink Himalayan salt. Pink Himalayan salt is absolutely delicious. And then some 